we move to Sunday, September 15th, 1 p.m. Eastern with the New Orleans Saints coming off a nice victory at the Dallas Cowboys coming off an excellent victory. We're at at and Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Let's get into the line history here for this one. Pinnacle line moves. This is at a 45 and a half, and it's juiced to the over. Opened up at 44 and a half. Now at 45 and a half, you see 46s at other books. Shout out to the Cheshire Cat. Thank you for the dono, my friend. Uh, means a ton here. Thank you. Uh, and from a spread perspective, let's get into that here. Cheshire blessing our action. We have Dallas minus six and a half at minus 105. Opened up at six, now six and a half. Minus 105. Uh, it is slightly, slightly juiced to the uh, Saints at the six and a half number. Let's get into the cash flow for this spot. We have 18% of the tickets and 92% of the cash on the Cowboys. 78% of the tickets and 85% of cash on the over. Londo on the Cowboys minus six and a half. Birdie bet the Cowboys minus six and a half. Spenny Pennybomb says Cowboys. Now, Birdie was bullish against us when we were on the Browns last week. And it was a spectacular call by our friend Birdie. Uh, Coin says, teams that recorded big week one divisional wins by seven points or more are 27 and 23 straight up, 27, 19 and two against the spread since 2006 in week two. And that was the New Orleans Saints here. Saints coming off that dominant 47-10 home victory over the lowly Panthers, up 30 to zero before the Panthers put up any points. It was a very impressive debut for Clint uh, Kubiak, uh, I mean, how could it have gone any have been any more impressive? Uh, first game calling plays, most points Saints have ever scored in the season opener. Uh, Derek Carr, nineteen and twenty three for two hundred yards and three touchdowns, no interceptions. I don't believe in him, but he finished the year strong. Had a really nice last five games of the year. Now he had a good opener. Rashid Shahid caught three passes for seventy three yards and a touchdown. Foster Moreau caught four forty three. Now he was pulled from the game with concussion symptoms. After a first down catch in the fourth quarter, he's in protocol right now. Uh, Chris Olave was nowhere to be found. Just two catches for 11 yards. We'll talk about the star receivers that didn't get uh, you know, many uh, looks. He only got those two targets. Alvin Kamara, 15 carries for 83 yards and a touchdown. He caught five passes for 27 yards. They continued this streak of not having a 20-yard run, but he had a great game. Saints ran 37 times for 180 yards as a team. The pass, draw, pass rush was strong throughout the game. Uh, cornerback Alante Taylor, six tackles and three sacks. Ooh-wee, the Tennessee product, 25 years old, sets the New Orleans record and ties the NFL record for most sacks in the game by a defensive back. Will Harris and Jordan Howden had interceptions. Uh, left guard Lucas Patrick left the game with a toe injury in the first half, and Marshawn Lattimore left with a hamstring injury. Now, it's considered minor. Uh, he's listed as questionable to go this week, but that's a big piece there. Cowboys looked very good in their 33-17 victory at Cleveland. Uh, Dak secures 240 mil, 19-32 for 179 yards and a touchdown. $60 million per year in new money. C.D. Lamb caught five passes for 61 yards, also ran three times for 25 yards. You know, the running game looked better than I expected it to. Uh, Zeke looked a little better, uh, 10 carries for 40 yards and a touchdown. And then C.D. Lamb, those three carries for 25 yards is helpful. So Dak gets paid two weeks after C.D. gets that $136 million contract. Brandon Cooks caught four for 40 and a touchdown. The pass rush looked excellent. Six sacks, 17 quarterback hits. I mean, is that the Browns offense or sorry, offensive line looking weak? Or is that Demarcus Lawrence healthy? Two sacks, three tackles for a loss, four quarterback hits. Micah Parsons, one sack, but five quarterback hits. The defense was very strong. Held the Browns to 2 of 15 on third down. Is that a case, again, of the Browns offense being much worse than we expected it to be? At the half, they'd held the Browns to one first down and just 54 yards of offense. Eric Kendricks and Trayvon Diggs had interceptions. Aubrey, I mean, this guy can kick from the moon. I mean, I, this, it's such a weapon. He kicks from 57, 50, 46, and 40. I mean, we saw what Boz did for the Steelers. I mean, it's a luxury. Uh, Jake Ferguson lipped off the field with a left knee injury uh, after being tackled on a short completion. It's a bone bruise and a sprain of the medial collateral ligament in his knee. He's going to miss time. Now, he's not yet being ruled out for week two, but he's not going to be on the uh, in the lineup on Sunday. Take it away for us here, Troy Saints, Cowboys in Arlington, Texas. As you're as you're kind of breaking the game down, um, 
I'm thinking to myself, what's the one variable that we could believe in? What's the one performance from these offenses or defenses that we can believe in? And the one that sticks out to me is the Cowboys ability to produce and be efficient versus the Browns defense. And I know you could look at the game, you know, the end of the game metrics and say, they only generated, you know, they were 29% on third down, 4.3 yards per play. I know it's not impressive on paper, but that's because they didn't have to do shit in the second half. All they had, they could have punted it on first down and won that game. They knew it. They called the plays accordingly. Got to give, got to give them credit for not blowing it. And um, I may have under, underestimated this offense. I mean, I'm still not fully bought in. But, you know, I'm, I'm not going to let the metrics on paper from the end of that game uh, lead me in any direction because what C.D. Lamb is doing at wide receiver is truly impressive. I actually believe that he's the best wide receiver in the league as of right now, as of today, um, after some of the numbers I was looking at. And when, when you just watch him run, you know, run the ball, catch the ball, anything he's doing, the athleticism he brings to the table, um, it's just incredible. And the Saints – you know, they played the Panthers. You can put a lot of a lot more. You can give a lot of credit to whoever you want. I don't believe it until I see it. I was really low on the Saints defense, Saints offense and defense. I don't think I'm ready to change that. Uh, the defense was great, right? I mean, this was the worst offensive performance I think I've ever seen. And still, the, the Saints defense graded out as 26th in pass rush and 13th in coverage. I mean, that's not that impressive. I believe in the Cowboys offense and, and what I've seen with the Cowboys offense against the Browns. I kind of think this could turn into a blowout. When you look in the market, you look at the Cowboys at home price in this range market moving towards them. They are five and zero oh straight up, six and or five and zero oh straight up, four and one ATS, winning by twenty points on average. I mean, these are blowout type of situations for the Cowboys at home. And I don't know if we should expect quite the letdown from the Cowboys that we we originally thought. And that was an oversight on me, and I apologize for anybody who followed me on the Browns because it was it was it was disgusting. And we'll get to the Browns later. I'm on the Cowboys, Jim. I'm on the Cowboys. I bet at minus six. I bet a money line parlay with the Colts. And um, I'm I'm very bullish on the Cowboys this week. Cowboys with a money line Colts uh, parlay. We'll get into the numbers on that. What was the minus six here? Minus uh, 115. Did, minus 115. Nice job. I if agree. You, if you – so uh, why? what's in the markets right now? Is there no sixes? There was – uh, six and a halfs now. Uh, let me just see if there are. Oh no, you can still get sixes. Yeah. Six minus one fifty. Oh. Bet Chris. No, no. You, you... Oh yes, yeah, so I bet Chris. That's the last one. That's the last one left. I mean, I did six, six and a half. That that doesn't concern me. Uh, yeah, I I agree with this breakdown. I agree with this breakdown. I I think we're getting uh, the benefit of the Saints blowing out the Panthers. This yeah, this might be the like the the best sell high spot on this Saints team that we we see for the rest of the season. If you told me that they scored forty seven points on Olave at two catches for eleven yards, I would be shocked if I didn't watch the game with my own two eyes. No, I, I'm very interested in joining you. Um, I can hook hook you up with the cash flow uh, here. D Jenkins wants it's probably more. Probably the cash. same. I mean, it's probably the same as what it always is. It is sharp action is on Dallas. Eighteen percent of bets, ninety one percent of money, and yep. you see that across the market, like pretty much every game right now. And seventy eight and eighty five on the over. And uh, Dennis saying, you know, as an Eagles fan, you know, he was just so happy to see this contract uh, come in for Dak. Anybody who dislikes the Cowboys was applauding and thankful and excited. And, you know, it's a, it's, it's going to be a, a very uncomfortable contract uh, very soon. Very, very soon. Uh, Jeff Slaughter says Cowboys win by four to six. Take that hook. I'm telling y'all. So yeah, I, uh, Harold Williams says Dallas is overrated. I certainly, uh, had question marks around their running game. And and I don't know if, if the Saints defense will give us a, a real litmus test for the running game. Kent Davies says, I could see Dallas scoring two touchdowns, 100-plus rushing and 100-plus receiving. Uh, and Perfect Rotation says Dallas wins by two scores. So, yes, that would be me rolling with you, Orlando. And Ziggy Ball says the perception will be the Saints beat the horrible Panthers and the Cowboys with a blowout win. Uh, he likes the Saints against the spread. I think we're going to hear a lot of that. I think we're going to hear a lot of uh, action on the Saints. I think it'll be sharp action, and I 
obviously would like this to close at seven and a half. You know, so we'll just kind of watch where it goes. If this closes at six or five and a half, we'll know that we're in big trouble. Uh, Johnny Gunn says the over is so enticing. I don't. I need to see the Saints' offense here. And the Saints' offense. That, the Saints' offensive line graded out as the best pass blocking unit in the NFL in Week One. We know that's not true. We know it's not the case. Yeah, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm willing to take the chance here. Uh, Joseph one says Dallas scoring thirty plus. I mean, if Dallas scores thirty plus, this game's going over. I, I don't feel that as an appealing spot here because I just don't trust what we saw from the Saints. But uh, I'm interested. I'm interested in joining here. I'll have to. I mean, this this market right now is currently looking exactly like the Cowboys Rams. Or the Cowboys Jets last year, 30 to 10, they win by 20. It's the same exact shit. Cowboys Rams, 43 to 20. No, man. Nut Flush says if you want to play the over, play the Dallas team total over. Uh, Johnny Gunn says based off of last week and last year, Dallas lets up off the gas. Uh, Jermaine saying Lattimore may not play. Dallas rolls by at least nine. Uh, you know, and then I'll, I'll heed Jeff's advice and see what the price is for the six. But I'm interested in joining. And I, don't uh, have a lot of interest in the total. Uh, 